Good afternoon. It is Tuesday, August 24th. Skipped yesterday. I was busy gaming with my buddies after work, so it's moved on to today. Today, I got food plans. I defrosted some hamburger. I got like breadcrumbs and marinara sauce that my brain was all like, I gotta, I gotta do something with it soon. It's gonna expire soon. November of 2022, okay. So I had a little longer than I thought, but, uh, and you know, spaghetti. So I'm gonna make spaghetti, it's been a while. I've made a lot of Alfredo pasta. It's been quite a while since I made spaghetti, but I'm gonna make some meatballs, it'll be good. Um, but it is Tuesday, so I'm gonna get that going and settle in for a movie, and you know, so, you know I could, Watch another James Bond. I got one more to watch, and then this first of the three packs of Blu-rays gets to come out to the front. There's only one more in there. Could do that. Could. Or watch a movie from this shelf that has just recently opened up. There's a lot of great movies on this shelf. Kung Pao, Labyrinth, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Series of Unfortunate Events, uh, the, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings movies. Um, got the Mary Poppins movies, Matilda, Matrix Trilogy, Merlin, the Monty Python films, oh, wonderful. Moulin Rouge, Mummy movies, some others, great movies, great movies I love on there. And that's not even thinking about, there are many movies on there that I've never seen. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that, but there's a lot of movies on the shelves that I haven't seen. They're just never what comes to my mind is, oh, I want to watch that, because I don't know them very well. Um, like just on this shelf, movies I haven't seen, uh, Les Miserables, Lilo and Stitch, um, Manchurian Candidate, I've seen maybe like a scene of Master of Disguise, but I haven't seen most of it, uh, Metropolis, um, I don't know if I've seen the Munsters movies, I used to watch the TV show on Nick at Night, I don't know if the movies were ever on there, so I might have seen them, but probably not. I don't think I've ever seen My Blue Haven or The Man with Two Brains. Um, and that's just on that shelf. So there's lots of movies I've never seen, but they're not the ones that I gravitate towards. I'm thinking, what do I want to watch? And I'm thinking, I want to watch Labyrinth. Love the movie. It's a great movie. Um, I, got, I got a couple copies here. I got, you know, Blu-ray version, which is what I'm going to actually watch. But I'm going to keep my DVD version, even as I get rid of duplicates, because it's got, like, special stuff. Like, it's got, like, little goblin art. It's got the collector's edition. I got this whatever. I don't know. Nifty little things in there. So, got the collector's edition. I'm going to keep that, but, of course, the, uh, the Blu-ray version is the one to watch, because image quality. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to get my spaghetti going and then watch the labyrinth. <sighs> Through dangers untold and hardships unnumbered, I have fought my way here to the castle beyond the Goblin City, to take back the child which you have stolen. My will is as strong as yours, and my kingdom is great. You have no power over me. I would give Jim Henson's Labyrinth 9.3 out of 10. It's really, really a good movie. It's... It's a light musical, and therefore, and with the music being that of David Bowie, a good entry wave, if you have someone that enjoys fantasy, but says they don't like musicals. We'll see. Anyways, from the back of the box. Journey into the fantastical world of Labyrinth, starring David Bowie and a cast of incredible creatures created by Jim Henson. 
frustrated with babysitting on yet another weekend night. Sarah, Jennifer Connelly, a teenager with an active imagination, summons the goblins from her favorite book, Labyrinth, to take her baby stepbrother away. When little Toby actually disappears, Sarah must follow him into the world of the fairy tale to rescue him from the wicked Goblin King, Bowie. Guarding his castle is the labyrinth itself, a twisted maze of deception populated with outrageous characters and unknown dangers. To get through it in time to save Toby, Sarah will have to outwit the king by befriending the very goblins who protect him, in hopes that their loyalty isn't just another illusion in a place where nothing is as it seems. I remember I was, I was a small kid when my mom had me come into her room uh, we, we sat down to watch the movie and he started watching and I'm like this movie's boring here I am two or three minutes into it I remember thinking that and then you get the first glimpse of the goblins and I'm like We'll see if it gets better. And then the story continues to be a little bit, oh, drama. Poor, poor little teenager, all upset. Things go back and back, and then everything breaks loose. Toby's gone. Here comes Bowie, looking weird. I didn't know who he was at the time. But then, she steps out of the window before the labyrinth. And I was interested. We'd entered the, way, the world of the labyrinth. And it is amazing. Fantasy. Fairy tale. Things I love. Things I've loved since I was a small child. I have other memories. I remember being a teenager. Yeah. Early teens. Going up to DK Hobbies. Dragon King Games and Hobbies. The, the, the gaming shop that I would attend with my buddies as a child. It went out of business long ago and we moved over to Fantasy Shop. But... As a kid, the first gaming shop, the first place I played D&D, that was DK Hobbies. And sometimes we'd be in there on Fridays, and, and they were busy, and whatever. Sometimes we'd be on there on weekdays, or, or slower days. And when it was slow, the owner had a TV, and he'd put in movies to watch. Really to keep himself entertained, but... Depending on, you know, oh, it's someone else's turn, I'm going to turn and watch. And it was not uncommon for him to watch The Labyrinth. He would watch that movie over and over and over again. I don't blame him. It's a great movie. And it definitely fits the theme of the shop, so if anyone walking in sees it, seems normal. I'm sure playing it in a public space probably wasn't something he was supposed to do. But, uh, never crossed my mind then, and... Well, they're out of business now anyways. <laughs> but I definitely remember seeing bits and pieces of it over and over then. I just have some select memories of the labyrinth, even just from my youth. It has been with me. It has, and I guess suffice to say, it has been with me to the point that there is a lot of uh, bias in how much I love the movie. I love the movie, and the movie is great story of this let's go also watching it here is probably the first time that my brain really recognizes the the age difference because jennifer conley is a, a child <laughs> i think she's what 15 16 something like that david bowie's a bit older <laughs> so there are there are some uh some things hinted at in this that i'm like oh creepy but, whatever. Uh, <laughs> he's kidnapping a baby to turn it into a goblin. I guess it's fine. He's supposed to be creepy. <laughs> but, um... 
But it's a good movie. The music is great. I mean, it's Bowie. What do you expect? And uh, I mean, it's a great story. There's friendship. There's there's such growth in her because you know as the story progresses, she's trying to get help from these other goblins, and she meets Hoggle. Who there's some back and forth with. Um, who is more than once called Hogwart. I'm not saying J.K. Rowling got an idea from this movie, but I mean, that's where Hogwart came from. So, just saying. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, through some back and forth interaction with Hoggle, she ends up forming a friendship. He's a coward. He's not a very loyal friend to have. But it's still a friendship. She saves Ludo, a giant beast who's friend with rocks. He can call forth the rocks to aid him. He's great. And he's so so sweet. Ludo friend. Oh, I love him. Um, and eventually, in the bog of eternal stench, they meet uh, Sir Didymus, a valiant knight. Not the brightest, but uh, he's brave. And with them, she eventually reaches the Goblin City. But near, near the destination, near the end, through some of Hoggle's cowardice, she ends up entranced and in a spell of Jareth's, the Goblin King. Forgetting what exactly she was after. And she finds herself in a facsimile of her home. She believes she's back in her room, and there's this goblin who's collecting things. It's just all of her, all of their possessions piled on their back, and tries to do the same to Sarah. Here, this is the stuff that's important: your books, your games, your stuffed animals, your makeup, your toys, your collectibles. You have. So much stuff, so many possessions, important things. These are what is important. This is the important stuff. I can relate. Because that's who she was. The whole reason she was mad at her stepbrother is that one of her stuffed animals had been taken from her room for him to play with. It's her things that are important. I can relate. What does she say? It's all junk. She has to save her brother. Because she cares about him. And that's what's important. And that's true. And that is incredible growth. You see that growth in her. You see Hoggle's growth in overcoming his fears. Through all that, they get to Jareth's castle. And as she'd said the right words to send her brother away, she says the right words to defeat him. Doesn't mean she doesn't need the friends she'd made along the way. Sometimes, she will. Always. But she got back what was important. And along the way is puppets. Puppets every... Uh, so many great puppets. Okay, so, I, um... I guess step aside. I'm a fan of Disney. I got, like, oh, this Disney artwork in there. I actually had a friend the other day ask why I had Finding Nemo in there. He's like, that's digital. You don't like digital. I'm like, well, I mean, it's also, it's Pixar. I'm mad at Disney for going digital because Disney did traditional. I'm really not mad at them for doing it. I'm mad at them for abandoning traditional because I love the skill and artistry that was passed along from generation to generation in Disney as far as traditional art. I like it for the technique. It is art. And I appreciate the technique. That makes those movies mean more that they're hand-drawn, that they are 
traditional art. Likewise, this movie is puppetry in all its sorts. So many, you have, the, the people that are collecting junk, it's a little bitty squat goblin with this mound of junk on their back. However, that mound of junk is a person standing upside. And they're seeing through, I don't know, the back of a chair or whatever here. Whereas the face of the creature that they're supposed to be is down around their stomach. There's just this pile of junk that covers up them. Because they're walking around, puppeting the, the face probably with something inside. Hoggle is a remote controlled head on um, a small person who is move the body. You have uh, Ludo, who is a person in a giant suit that's bigger than a real person. You have uh, Sir Didymus, half the time is just a stuffed animal put on the back of a dog and, and it shakes around as it runs. You have actual like puppets like marionette like wires hanging from above you have puppets that are you know people's hands reaching up from the bottoms of the sets you have you have uh luma key the 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 fire gang um are bright orange puppets being puppeteered by people in all black suits against an all black background and then the black is all keyed out and it is put over a background because they're they're dancing around like that. You have uh, little pole wires and things with some of the stuff with the uh, the, the, the lichen. Um, uh, you have what is just hands through walls as far as say the, the doorways where it's just something manipulating it from the other side of the door. You have actual just makeup hands and doing like hand gestures where multiple people are putting their hands together to make the helping hands and to make faces out of them. There is so much amazing puppetry exampled, shown off in this film. The puppetry is astonishing. They have, they have done it all. It is great. It is wonderful. It is exciting. And there's more than I've mentioned that I know of, if I really watched through and was thinking as I went. And I'm sure there, and there is stuff in there that I have no idea how they did it. It's exciting. As someone who likes the filmmaking process and who likes interesting things like that, I love, I love the artistry behind the movie. I love the story. I love the music. It's a great movie as it is. But what really sets it over the top is being one of the best movies is the artistry behind it. Jim Henson's puppetry is astonishing. <laughs> like I said, it's it's a great movie. It's a great setting. I mean, for someone that plays D&D &D and the fantasy settings, it's it's a a wonderful take on all that. It's it's none of that to be over, you know, to be downplayed, but the way that it was done makes it so much more than it could have been then it likely would have been if it was made today, and they would have just said, eh, we'll just make it all CG. And it still would have been a good movie. But the way it was done, it's a great movie. I don't know. I, I kind of have a, an assumption. I mean, this movie's older than me. I presume everyone has seen The Labyrinth. But if you hadn't, haven't, and you like fantasy, fairy tale, at all, or if you just like some great puppetry, I cannot give a higher recommendation but to see this movie. Shout out down below if you're a fan of The Labyrinth. It's a great film. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's it for my day. Call it a night. Thank you for joining me. Join me as my journey continues.